Stats certainly help a Pokemon achieve some sort of meta relevancy, but what are stats without the proper moves to make it work? Today we'll be exploring Pokemon who are one move away from being potentially meta relevant in the Great League. Swalot gaining access to Poison Jab. Poison is probably one of the most underused types in the meta right now, in the sense that its play is rather limited. It only hits two types for super effective, those being Grass and Fairy. It has a nice resistance to counter as well, but so do other more relevant types. Most poison types in the meta, such as Nidoqueen and Venusaur, have dual typings, making them more versatile in comparison to mono poisons like Swalot. But even so, Swalot has great potential thanks to its excellent natural bulk and interesting moveset. Its charge move arsenal consists of Sludge Bomb, a very consistent and relatively inexpensive poison type move, and Ice Beam, which can catch a lot of Altaria and Noctowl users by surprise. However, where its limited play comes in is with its fast moves. It's got Infestation and Rock Smash. Rock Smash is absolutely terrible, and while Infestation is an okay move, it lacks stab and thus more fast move pressure. The bug typing on Infestation also hurts against the fairy types that it usually counters thanks to fairy types resisting bug moves. In the main series games, Swalot learns Poison Jab, I think that giving Swalot this move would make it much more consistent at shutting down the things it's meant to counter. Ludicolo gaining access to Surf. Dance, dance, Ludi. Ludicolo and the Low Tad line still remain the game's only water and grass types, and that's a really cool thing just considering how good this typing is. It's a rare grass type that handles fire types, and it also double resists water attacks. However, despite these attributes, Ludicolo hasn't been able to quite capitalize on the meta. For one, Ludicolo's charged attacks are all 55 energy or higher, with Ice Beam and Leaf Storm being the cheapest. And while some Pokemon like Azumarill are able to make this work because they have good natural bulk, Ludicolo's bulk is merely average when we apply it to neutral situations. That's why I think Ludicolo could benefit from a bait move, and Surf is just the move. Surf is a great move in GBL, and its perks include nice damage output for such little energy and more consistent water coverage. Either one of these moves would definitely help the Dancing Pineapple Duck and hopefully propel its way into relevancy. Sudowoodo gets access to Body Slam. Mystic 7's favorite Pokemon is actually quite a fun pick in limited metas, particularly the Weather Cup. You can find the video of Sudowoodo in action on my channel. Sorry, the shameless plug had to be done at some point. Back to the tree. It's actually somewhat decent. While it's not bulky, it's not glassy either. It has counter as a fast move, which makes steel types like Galarian Stunfisk and Reggie Steel struggle up against the rock type. Rock Slide, Meteor Beam, and Earthquake are all great charge moves as well. So what's Sudowoodo's problem? Well, Rock Slide isn't exactly a bait move. But Harrow, certain Pokemon can make that sort of move set work. Azumarill has all 55 plus energy charge moves. Yes, but Sudowoodo doesn't nearly have the bulk of Azu, so it needs a bait move. So what better bait move than the coveted Body Slam? It features wide neutral coverage, has a solid 1.71 DPE, and makes Sudowoodo a spam machine. Runarigus getting access to Rock Slide. Runarigus is probably the best Pokemon on this list, but why does it find itself on here? Well, it doesn't really have a threatening bait move. Sand Tomb is a relatively weak move that guarantees a one-stage debuff to your opponent's defense. Plus, against normal flying types that have previously taken the meta by storm, Runarigus is completely walled. Now, I've encountered some Runarigus that have rectified this problem by running Rock Tomb. However, Rock Tomb is such a weak move that it doesn't even flip those matchups even though it hits for super effective damage. With worse parameters overall compared to Shadow Ball, there's basically no reason to run it. Rock Slide is a significantly better move for this role, giving Runarigus a niche that has yet to be seen in the Great League. This new implementation also has the added bonus of hitting Dugong for super effective damage. If this change happens, Runarigus would definitely be among the top meta threats. Crobat getting access to Wing Attack We have seen just how potent Goldbat can be in the Great League. Crobat has the potential to be just as strong, if not stronger, especially with its shadow form, thanks to its higher CP and thus more offensively skewed stats. Crobat and Golbat run very similar charged attacks. Unfortunately, in the Great League, Crobat lurks in its pre-evolution shadow thanks to Air Slash, a weaker quick move compared to Wing Attack. Air Slash isn't exactly bad, in fact, it's average. 
However, Golbat's access to Wing Attack allows it to stand out compared to Crobat. It loses 0.5 damage per turn in exchange for one extra energy per turn. By giving it the ability to reach its charge move sooner, it actually allows Golbat to pressure more shields. Now, the only problem I foresee with this change is that giving Crobat access to Wing Attack would make it identical to Golbat. However, Crobat has access to Cross Poison, something Golbat does not learn, which deals more damage, costs less energy, and has a 1 in 8 chance of a 2 times attack buff, which could definitely help differentiate its play a bit. Hitmontop getting access to Rock Slide. This change might seem minuscule on paper, considering that it already runs Stone Edge, but trust me when I say that it could make a huge difference. Consider Cradilly, which previously ran the more expensive Stone Edge. Now that it is Rock Slide, it actually threatens rock damage a lot quicker. The same applies to Hitmontop. Even if Rock Slide does less damage, its lower energy cost on a glassier Pokemon like Hitmontop could help it threaten flying types faster. While four turns might not seem like a lot, it actually could make all the difference for glass cannons. And Hitmontop, while not exactly a glass cannon, isn't exactly a tank either. It needs the speed from Rock Slide to help it nuke anything in the air. With its energy cost the same as Close Combat, Rock Slide can also act as a bait move in case Hitmontop doesn't want to lower its defense in a specific matchup. Girafferit getting access to Crunch. Oranguru gets the dubious reputation of being a ghost trapper. With its normal and psychic typing, it tricks ghost types into thinking they're safe against a psychic type, all the while being walled thanks to Oranguru's normal subtyping. While Oranguru is more effective compared to Girafferick because of its better natural bulk, Oranguru stands out from Girafferick in more ways than one. It also punishes ghosts with super effective foul play. Not having access to a dark move definitely sets Girafferick back a bit compared to Oranguru. Its frailty doesn't allow it to use Thunderbolt as much as it would like, even though Thunderbolt isn't the most expensive move out there. It's like the points I made with Hitmontop. Energy cost matters so much to glassy Pokemon. Crunch on Girafferic only seems right, giving it a Lycanroc Midnight style of play while acting like a true Ghost Trapper. Please note that the aforementioned Foul Play is also good here. The main reason I said Crunch over Foul Play is because Crunch comes with that 30% chance to lower your opponent's defense by one stage, whereas Foul Play does not. However, both moves are suitable. Overall, I think that these changes are quite suitable for these Pokemon in order to help them become more viable in the meta. Today's video was done a little bit differently as you can see, so if you like this sort of format, let me know in the comment section below and by giving this video a thumbs up. Anyways, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.